Okay, so what happens at negative 3? Okay, I know it changes from decreasing to increasing, but what is the minimum? Okay, we've got a minimum at negative 3, a local minimum, and at positive 5, what do we have? We've got a maximum, okay? So, what I'm asking about, what characteristic of the function creates the minimum at negative 3 and the maximum at x equals 5, is that change from decreasing to increasing that creates a minimum, okay? Decreasing to increasing creates a minimum. Increasing to decreasing creates a maximum. So the first derivative test um, is this, okay? You've got to have a continuous and differentiable function Okay, that's always the case, uh, except sometimes at your critical numbers, you're not differentiable. Okay, sharp points, vertical tangent lines, things like that. Um, you may not be differentiable at those critical numbers. Okay, if the derivative changes from positive to negative at your critical point, then f of c is a relative maximum. Okay. If the derivative changes from positive to negative, that means the original changes from increasing to decreasing. Positive derivative, increasing original function. Negative derivative, decreasing original function. Then vice versa, if your derivative changes from negative to positive, that means the original changed from decreasing to increasing. That means you're going to have a minimum. You're going to have a relative minimum. Sometimes the derivative does not change signs at your critical numbers. Then that critical number is neither a minimum nor a maximum. Um, something else happens. We're going to look at the second derivative test um, within the next couple of days. We'll find out what happens when it doesn't change signs. You had an example of that on the review sheet that I was having you do. I told you that the derivative was zero at a point, but the function was increasing and then it continued increasing. So it wasn't a maximum, but the derivative did, did equal zero for a reason. We are going to find the relative extrema of this function. f of x is equal to one half x minus the sine of x on the interval from zero to two pi. It is an open interval, so we do not include the endpoints. Uh, whenever it says relative, you are looking for maxes and mins. Okay? We are not concerned with uh, the endpoints. It doesn't say what, what are the absolute extrema. It just asks for the relative, so you're looking for relative maxes and mins. So, we've got to take our derivative. Because if we're finding extrema, we've got to find critical points. Critical points come from where the derivative is equal to zero. So the derivative of this function, the derivative of one-half x is one-half. The derivative of sine is cosine. There was a minus in front of it. So this is our derivative. Critical points occur where the derivative is equal to zero. So we're trying to solve this. The cosine needs to be on one side. The one-half needs to be on the other side. I'm going to add the cosine since it was negative on the right side. So our answers are going to come when the cosine is equal to one-half. Well, that happens in the first quadrant at pi over 3. It happens in the fourth quadrant at 5 pi over 3. Those are our two critical points. We're going to use our first derivative test to determine whether those are relative maximums or relative minimums. So number line, okay, I've got pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. So I'm going to try and pick really, really easy numbers here um, in terms of evaluating the trig function to figure these out. Okay, I'm going to use zero because zero is always handy. Zero is less than pi over three. A really easy number between pi over three and five pi over three would be pi. 
And you've got a lot of options, technically pi over 2. 3 pi over 2 would also be easy, but let's just go with pi. And then uh, bigger than 5 pi over 3 is 2 pi. Alright, so we are plugging this into the derivative. I like to always label down here f prime so that I realize I'm plugging this into the derivative. So I'm plugging in 0 into the derivative. The cosine of 0 is 1. So 1 half minus 1 is a negative number. Pi. The cosine of pi is negative 1. Subtracting negative 1, so that's the same as adding 1. So 1 half plus 1 is positive. And 2 pi, that's going to have the same result as 0 because 0 and 2 pi are the same angles, so it is negative. Okay? So that means that f prime was negative, so f is decreasing. Then it was positive, so f is increasing, and then it's decreasing again. So when we change from decreasing to increasing, that's a minimum. When we change from increasing to decreasing, that's a maximum. Now, because it asked for the relative extrema, we need to include the y values as well. So we need to find uh, f of pi over 3. So that gives us pi over 6 minus the sine of pi over 3 is the square root of 3 over 2. Typically, they are going to go ahead and get a common denominator there. So we need to multiply the second term by 3. So that's pi minus 3 square root of 3 over 6. And f of 5 pi over 3. We've got 1 half times 5 pi over 3 minus the sine of 5 pi over 3, which gives us 5 pi over 6, minus the sine of 5 pi over 3. It's the same value as the sine of pi over 3, but 5 pi over 3 is in the fourth quadrant, so sine is negative, so that's going to become plus the square root of 3 over 2. So when we get a common denominator, that would be 5 pi plus the square root of 3 over 6. So, we have a relative minimum at pi over 3, pi minus 3 square root to 3 over 6, and we have a relative max at 5 pi over 3, 5 pi plus 3 square root of 3 over 6. Questions? The trig is what makes that one so lengthy. The premise is rather simple. Okay, let's look at one that does not involve trig. Find the relative extrema of f of x is equal to x squared minus 4 to the 2 thirds. To the 2 thirds. Now, we should be getting used to the idea that when we've got uh, rational exponents, some different things are going to happen. Okay, so relative extrema. Extrema makes us think critical numbers. Critical numbers makes us think derivative equal to zero. So f prime of x is, bring down the exponent, keep the inside the same, subtract one from the exponent, multiply by the derivative of what's in the inside. So 2 thirds x squared minus 4 to the negative 1 third times 2x. Let's clean that up a bit. Okay, the 2 and the 2x stay in the numerator. So that's 4x. 3 is in the denominator, and the x squared minus 4 is going to move to the denominator to make that exponent positive. 
Critical numbers come from where the derivative is equal to zero or where it's undefined. I didn't mention that in the last problem because there wasn't anywhere where it would be undefined. There is the possibility of it being undefined here because we have uh, a denominator with variable in it. So we need to set uh, zero equal to the numerator because that's the only way a fraction will be equal to zero is if the numerator is equal to zero. And then we also need to set the denominator equal to zero because that's where the derivative is undefined. So that means we have a critical number at zero. So when you divide both sides by four, you get zero is equal to x. We also have a critical number or critical numbers actually. Okay, divide by three, raise both sides to the third power, which still gives us zero. X squared minus four. 4 is equal to x squared, take the square root, don't forget the plus and the minus. So we have three critical numbers here. We have 0 and positive and negative 2. So let's make this a number line. We've got negative 2, 0, and positive 2. So I'm going to check negative 3, negative 1, positive 1, and positive 3. Plugging this into the derivative. All right. Now, here's an example where I'm not actually going to find the real value. I'm just going to, to decide whether it's positive or negative. So when I plug in negative 3 into the derivative right here, the numerator is going to be negative. So you got 4 times negative 3. That's going to be a negative. The denominator. 3 is always positive. So I've just got to worry about what's inside the parentheses there. Negative 3 squared is positive 9. 9 minus 4 is positive. The cube root of a positive number is a positive. So a negative divided by a positive is a negative. When we plug in negative 1, we're going to get a negative on the top. 3 is always positive. Negative 1 squared is 1. 1 minus 4 is negative. The cube root of a negative number is a negative number. So a negative divided by a negative is a positive. When we plug in 1, the numerator is positive. We're going to get the same result in the denominator. 1 squared is 1, 1 minus 4 is negative, the cube root of a negative number is a negative, so that's going to give us a positive divided by a negative, which is a negative. When we plug in 3, top's going to be positive, and the bottom will be positive. Because 9 minus 4 is 5, the cube root of 5 is a positive number. Okay? So, Changing from negative to positive is a minimum. Decreasing, increasing. Okay. Maximum, minimum. We need their actual values. So I need to find f of negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. So 2 thirds is still 0. Plug in 0, we get negative 4 to the 2 thirds. Negative 4 squared is 16, so that's the cube root of 16. And when we plug in positive 2, we're going to get the same result as negative 2. So we have a relative, well, we actually have two relative minimums. A okay, relative mins. Negative 2, 0, and positive 2, 0. And we've got a relative max at 0, cube root of 16. Now, just so that y'all have a visual of this, I'm going to graph it really quickly. x squared minus 4 to the 2 thirds. You can see kind of how this function looks. Okay, notice that at negative 2 and 2, those are sharp points. The function is not differentiable there, but remember where those 